before we start solving question 2 of tutorial sheet 3 we will quickly revise what we had in the lecture in the last lecture about the friction the static friction if you want to go through the more detailed discussion you need just watch the lectures video here we just go quickly through one simple example The formula which we usually use for the static friction is a constant, which we call it mu s, the static friction coefficient, multiplied by the reaction force of the surface or grant on the object. For example, if we have this box we know we have downward vertical weight and the reaction force from the ground to the object is upward and is n in this case if we say mu s is for example 0 to 5 and we assume the weight is 100 Newton we apply one external force we call it F is equal to 20 Newton in this case what's the value of the friction force if you want to use and we are sure that the object doesn't move if you want to directly use this one and say ok my fs is equals to mu s m is 2.5 multiplied by 100 why n is 100 because of the equilibrium of force in y direction we know in y direction we don't have any movements then the acceleration is zero from this n is equal to mg therefore your friction is 25 and we know the friction direction is always opposite to the direction of the movement here in this case with capital force F we want to move the object to the left hand side then the friction force direction here is 25 Newton in right hand side now if I write the equilibrium of force in X direction these are my positive directions I have minus 20, this is applied external force and plus 25 this is the friction force, I directly use this empirical relationship equals to 5 equals to mAx therefore your AX is equal to 5 divided by mass then you see your AX is not 0 it means you have some acceleration which is positive as well positive means in this direction you have some acceleration AX in positive direction it means the friction coefficient causes the movement to the right hand side which is completely wrong then if you remember from the lecture here 
the value of the friction coefficient because we are sure that the object doesn't move. Next direction, we are sure that this is zero because it doesn't move in x direction and acceleration is zero. From this, definitely f is equal to f equals to 20 newton, which is less than the value calculated from this relationship. Mu s multiplied by m, which is 25. Then what we concluded in the lecture, we said if this is your friction coefficient, this is your applied external force. If you apply external force, in this case, F is zero, your friction coefficient definitely is zero. Then we have a point here. If it's 10, Definitely this is 10, to keep the static equilibrium. If it's 20, then this one is 20. But what happens at 25? What happens at this value, mu s n? Before 25, It's completely linear. Here, the point that the value of the friction is mu s n is the instant of motion, the instant that the object starts moving. Yes, and if we increase the value of the f, for example, 30, we see it suddenly dropped, and after this, we have kinematic friction coefficient. Here the object it's moving. Here the instant that object is starts moving. Here we have mu k which is another constant we call it kinetic friction coefficient multiplied by the ground or surface reaction force. Then you can see this is the maximum value of the static friction coefficient. It means the static friction coefficient is always less than or equal to this value. When you can use this relationship for Fs just for instant of just for instant of motion. Before that point, if you have just a static equilibrium, definitely you cannot use this relationship and your F is an unknown, you can calculate it through the equilibrium of force in X and Y direction. Now based on this discussion, we start solving this problem. First of all, I assume this system is in a static equilibrium. Definitely, my Fs is less than or equal to mu Sn. If it doesn't move, it means it's not at the instant of motion. It means I cannot use this relationship because this is only applicable when your object is at instant of motion. In this case, it's a completely static equilibrium, no motion. Then my Fs is it's an unknown. If there is no motion, it means the acceleration of the system is equal to zero. Both component of acceleration of zero. No motion. First, I look at this one. For this object, I want to draw the. I this coordinate system for positive directions. 
I have weight which is M B G which is equal to twenty multiplied by nine point eight. Which is equal to Six point three Newton, be careful about the units. The cable force this is the force applied from cable to object B, it's upward. Here we assume no motion, it means if I write the equilibrium of force in y direction no motion means acceleration is equal to zero this one t is positive minus mbg equal to zero then t is equal to mbg is equal one nine six point two meters and I don't need to write down the equilibrium of force in x direction because in this case for object B I don't have any horizontal force. Again, I look at this object A. For this object you can use the same coordinate system or different. I prefer to use this coordinate system because it's easier. But it's completely optional. You can analyze it using the same coordinate system. Then the free body diagram of this one of A I have the cable force which I calculated from here it's 196.2 I have M reaction force of this surface to the object which is always normal to the surface this is N I have the weight which is an external force MAG and this angle which is 30 degree my force ok this is the coordinate system I am using two components the vertical one is M A G sine 30 degree and the horizontal component is M A G sine 30 degree again I know there is no motion then my A X equals to A Y is equal to 0 sigma F y equals to m a y zero from this one if I write down the forces in y direction the vertical forces I have n which is positive I have 
the vertical component of weight which is negative m a g cosine 30 equals to 0 from this one n is equals to m a g cosine 30 If you want to calculate it, M is 60 kilogram, and this is the square root of 3. Multiplied by nine plus eight one multiplied by thirty it's five zero nine point seven four. Don't forget the units. Make sure your units are consistent. Okay, then if you write down the equilibrium of forces in x direction, again, no motion. In x direction we have a cable force is positive 196 point. We calculated its value from the previous step here. And we have horizontal force of the weight which is negative minus mag sine 30. This is 60, this is 1 over 2. You can see the total value here is a minus value if I want to calculate it it's okay multiply by it's one nine six point two minus 294.3 the total value is minus 98.1 then this is not in a static equilibrium no motion yes it should be zero what does it mean it means the resultant force in this case The resultant force in this case is in this direction, and it's in this direction, and its value is 98.1, because this is minus. Minus means opposite direction to x plus. Then to keep this object in a static equilibrium or no motion, we need one force 
which we call it friction, static friction, in positive direction to cancel this one. And now we know the direction of the friction force. The direction of the friction force in this case, when you have no motion, it's in positive direction plus Fs equals to zero. From this one, your Fs is equal to 9, 98.1 meter. OK. This is how we determine the direction of the friction force. Also, Otherwise, we don't know it's upward or downward. Now, the question is here, we didn't use this relationship mu s and y because we said the fs is always less than or equal to this value. We can use this value only for the case of instant of motion. It means the instant that object starts moving. But if there is no motion, it means in this region we are not allowed to use this relationship and we, ne we need to calculate the friction, the static friction directly as we did here. Now if you look at this value, we know the n, this is my n, sorry. I want to look at the mu s n value. Mu s is given here for part a. Yes, the static friction coefficient 0 0.25. The n we calculated here is 1 to 7.435. What does it mean? The F is calculated directly without using this formulation ship. It's equals to 9. This is based on the assumption no motion. We assumed no motion. Now how can we know this assumption is correct or not? We see here the calculated value directly is less than this mu s n, which is 127.35. And this one shows the assumption what's the assumption? No motion. No motion means we are not allowed to use this equation. We need to calculate Fs directly is correct. Our assumption is a right assumption. Then for this case, for case A, when we have these friction coefficients, we have no motion. If we have no motion, definitely the acceleration is zero. And the value of the T we calculated for acceleration is zero is here, 196.2. You see the answer is acceleration is zero, and the tension in the cable is 196.2. Now we repeat the same thing for case B. 
Okay, for case B, we have different static friction coefficients. Again, we repeat the same thing. Okay, we assume there is no motion. And if you assume there is no motion, you come up with the same, well, then you need to calculate Fs directly as we did, and you come up with the same value, exactly the same procedure. But now this time, we want to see whether our assumption, which is no motion, is correct or not. We want to see whether this one is less than mu Sn or not. In this case, mu s is different, is 0 0.15, and the n we have here is the same n, 76.46 Unfortunately, this value is not less than this value. We don't have this one. Therefore, our assumption is not correct. It means, what was our assumption? We assumed no motion and we solve the problem to calculate this value when it's not correct it means in this case we have motion and when you have motion we don't use any more fs because fs is for static or at most for the instant that object starts moving but when you have motion, we use fk, which is equals to mu k n. Okay. Now we need to solve it again because the previous solution based on no motion and it is not correct. motion and ax and ay in general they are not zero okay not equal yeah. first I look at this object object a this is n upward this is my coordinates is sorry n is normal to the surface the reaction for from this surface and it's normal to the surface and I have the weight, external force, I have cable force and here for this one I consider this coordinate system for object A which can be different from object B coordinate system, doesn't matter
again my mg has two components the vertical components it's mag cosine 30 degree and the horizontal one is mag sine 30 If I write down the equilibrium force in y direction, do I have any movement in y direction? We assume the object doesn't separate from the surface. It means we don't have any movement or translation in y direction if there is no separation between object and this surface therefore is equal to zero from this one I have n vertical positive I have m a j sine 30 and I don't have any other vertical forces equal to zero and this one is M A G cosine 30 degree, which we calculated before 509. In Newton. Similarly for F X, I have M. AX this time is not zero because I have motion but first of all I need to know the direction of the motion why because we know the friction is always the friction direction is always in opposite direction of the motion if I know the motion direction then I can know the direction of the friction force here without assuming any friction if I just write down from the previous step here what we did here we found out that the friction coefficient is upward it means for a static equilibrium it's upward and also for instant of the motion which we have this value it's upward and therefore after the motion also it's upward your object is starts moving downward your object A And this is my friction coefficient. This is what I. But this time is kinematic because we have motion. From the previous step, we concluded the friction is upward because object wants to move downward. And as we did before whenever you have this case first of all ignore the motion assume just pure static it means your acceleration are zero and from pure static you can determine the direction of the friction coefficient as we did here Okay, FK is positive. Kinematic friction coefficient. T is positive. Minus the horizontal force of the weight. Equals to MA. Acceleration of A. And here we know fk is nothing more than mu kn. Mu k is given. This is mu k. Zero point one and n calculated in previous step. Five zero nine. Seventy four. M a is sixty. 
this is 1 over 2, this is 60, this is we don't know, and the cable we don't know as well. We have one equation, two unknowns. It means we have another, we need another equation. For the next equation, we can look at the free body diagram of object B. We have M, B, G to a thick ground. Here we have T because this is the same cable you can see the force in this single cable cannot be different otherwise you will experience the jam or tearing of the cable T is upward and here We put this coordinate system, you can see now my coordinate system x prime y prime are different from object A. That's fine. I don't have any horizontal force in this case, then I just write down the equilibrium of forces in vertical direction. Because I have motion in this case, my acceleration is not zero or can be non zero. T is positive, MBG is negative equals to MB AB. This is 20, this is we calculated before was here. 1.9 okay, 196.2 one Newton this is another one this is my equation 1 we call it this is equation 2 again here I have two unknowns T and A, A and A, B different to acceleration but, if you remember from the constraint motion, we can relate the acceleration of B to A. I just go quickly through it. If you want more details, you can look at the lecture videos. Okay, if you say this one is SA, which is changing, it's a variable, when object A moves and object B moves, you have different value for SA and if we call this one SB, and you have arc lengths here, it's nearly quarter. If you this is R for example, the pulley, the radius of the pulley, this quarter would be pi r, the length of this quarter. The total length of the cable is SA plus pi r, the length of the cable which is in contact to pulley is plus SP. This is constant because pi is constant and that radius of the pulley is constant. The total length of the cable is constant therefore SA plus SP is a constant. If you take the first derivative with respect to time the left hand side is zero you have s dot a plus s dot b and we know this is nothing more than the velocity based on the definition of the velocity or here is the speed because we look at the scalar values and vb 
And again, if you take the next derivative, left hand side remains zero, v dot a plus v dot b, which is the acceleration, the magnitude of acceleration of object a and object b. From this one, a b is equal to minus a a. Now if I replace this one here, here is minus a a, and rewrite equation 1 and 2, equation 1, here I have 50 .97. I just rewrite this equation again, equation 1, minus the value, it's 200, I think, 94.97. Plus t, equals to 60 a a. If I write down equation 2 again, and I replace a a by minus a, sorry, replace a b by minus a a, which we draw it from constraint motion, We will have minus one nine six point two plus t equals to minus twenty a a. Here we have two unknowns and two equations. Then you can easily solve it. If you solve it, a a would be minus five. Sorry, zero point five eight nine meter per second square and t two hundred and seven point ninety eight newton. Your acceleration is minus. What does it mean? It means, okay, you assume here AA is minus 0 0.5 something. 589. Here is the positive direction. It means your acceleration is in this direction. This is the complete solution for question 2.